lived every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring ring with the harmonies of liberty let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of a new day begun, let us march on to victory is won. Stony the road we trod, bitter the chastening rod, felt in the days we in hope unborn had died yet with a steady being hath not a weary feet come to a place for which our fathers died. See, we have come over a way that with tears has been watered. We have come treading our path through the blood of the slaughtered out from the gloomy past till now we stand at last where the white gleam of the bright star is cast. God of the weary years, God of a silent tears, Thou who has brought us thus far on the way, Thou who has by Thy might led us into the Keep us forever in your path, we pray. Let 
darkness our feet stray from the places our God where we met thee and lest our hearts drunk with the wine of the world we forget thee shadowed beneath thy head may we fall stand true to our God, true to our native land. Hello, thank you for joining us. I'm Brother Jeff, former New Said Civil Rights Awardee and founder and executive director of Brother Jeff's Cultural Center in Historic Five Points. Welcome to the 29th annual New Said Civil Rights Awards. This year, we're doing things a little differently. Rather than giving out awards, we will take this time to reflect on the civil rights movement in its past, present, and future state. 2020 has been a particularly critical year, and we have lined up some of our leaders in the Denver social justice movement to delve deep into the topics and provide inspiration for the march ahead. Again, thank you for joining us, and I'd like to offer this ceremonial invocation. We stand on the shoulders of giants. The journey is long, the journey is hard, but we know that we will be victorious. We reflect on all that we've been through and all that we have done to bring things full circle. We wanna take a moment to remember those who are struggling not only with COVID-19, but also those who are struggling with the effects of this global pandemic. We will not forget them, we will not forget you, and we know that there have been many who have not received the proper ceremonial recognition of their life, loss, and sacrifice. We take a moment to honor them. We wanna take a moment to think about those who have put this incredible event virtually together. It would have been easy to stop, but in the spirit of social justice, in the spirit of civil rights, they've continued to move forward and we celebrate their vision and their willingness to keep moving forward. And to the participants, there are many things that you could be doing right now, but you chose to participate in a new way, in a virtual way, and continue to celebrate the great work of New Said and continue to move its mission forward. And so for that, we say thank you. For that, we say ashe. For that, we say alhamdulillah. And for that, we say peace. Enjoy this ceremony, enjoy this moment. And again, a great big thank you to New Said as they continue the journey of recognizing the many accomplishments of the past, the present, and the future. Ashe. Hola y bienvenidos. I want to thank you for joining us. I am Tony Garcia, the Executive Artistic Director at Su Teatro Cultural and Performing Arts Center and a former New Said Civil Rights Award recipient. I would like to share with you past events and anniversaries significant in the history of the civil rights movement. These events remind us how truly important the role of change and change makers have been in our ever evolving fight for social justice. Remembering these events are vital to our understanding of the road we have traveled as we look forward to the road ahead. In 1962, critical events took place. It was a not so distant time. It was a time when segregation was still legal. Jim Crow era laws were enacted to support and institutionalize the social, economic, and political inequity of the South, in addition to creating obstacles that would circumvent the newly enacted Civil Rights Act. The rapidly changing environment was challenging institutionally oppressive and racist social norms every day. One such challenge took place February 1st, 1960 in Greensboro, North Carolina, 
Four young African-American college students inspired by the nonviolent teachings of Mahatma Mohandas Gandhi staged a sit-in at the segregated Woolworth lunch counter. Their names were Ezell Blair Jr., David Richmond, Franklin McCain, and Joseph McNeil, infamously known as the Greensboro Four. Their actions caused similar sit-ins throughout the South, and within the year, similar protests had spread to 50 cities and 13 states and included actions at various other segregated venues and businesses. These protests led to the desegregation of many establishments and caused sweeping changes in Woolworth's policies. Shortly thereafter, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, SNCC, was created and served as a leader in the civil rights movement, leading efforts through the Freedom Riders campaign and the March on Washington, D.C. Young people continued to play an enormous role in 1960. The second major event that year involved six-year-old Ruby Bridges, who was the center of national attention when she became the first African-American student to integrate New Orleans, Louisiana School District. On the morning of her first day at William France Elementary School, and for every day during her first year, Ruby and her mother were escorted by federal marshals to and from school and endured regular protests. Many white parents pulled their children out of the schools. Ruby's father lost his job, and her family became the target of abuse and death threats. Ruby and her family persisted, and their actions changed the landscape of segregation. Ruby's commitment to activism never swayed, and as an adult, she wrote two books based on her experiences and started the Ruby Bridges Foundation with the mission of promoting tolerance and creating change through education. These two events were foundational events in the growing civil rights movement. That legacy continues today, reflected in the generations of activism and in the persistent pursuit of a more equitable society. We must also recognize the significance of the 1970 National Chicano Moratorium Against the War in Vietnam in Los Angeles. From 1969 through 1971, Chicano activists throughout the Southwest organized and staged protests against the ever-expanding war in Vietnam. Three key organizations played essential roles. The National Chicano Moratorium Committee, the United Mexican American Students, and the Brown Berets. Various young Chicano leaders resisted the Vietnam draft, faced jail time, and large fines. The landmark event took place at Laguna Park in Los Angeles on August 29, 1970. Over 30,000 people took part in a peaceful march down Whittier Boulevard. From throughout California, they came. They were joined by contingencies from across the country. Chicanos from Denver were represented in significant numbers at the protest. The march was violently disrupted as the Los Angeles Police Department attacked marchers with tear gas, clubs, and made mass arrests. Four people were killed that day, including the prolific and award-winning Los Angeles Times journalist, Ruben Salazar. While we take time to recognize these significant events, we must remember their lessons as well as those individuals and organizations that made these events possible. President John F. Kennedy said, a man may die Nations may rise and fall, but an idea lives on. Ideas, if moral and just, are only as good as the actions we take to fulfill them. I offer this remembrance to you and hope that you will find inspiration and strength in the bravery and sacrifice in those who came before us. Thank you for joining us. I would like to introduce 2017 New Said Civil Rights Award honoree, activist, and attorney, Kusair Mohammed Bai. Hello, my name is Kusair Mohammed Bai, proud and former recipient of New Said Civil Rights Award and an attorney with the law firm of Rathod Mohammed Bai. Welcome and thank you for being with us today. For this portion of the ceremony, I'm going to address some of the social justice challenges and triumphs of the current day before recognizing several members of our community who are no longer with us. 2020 has been a significant year in many ways, 
The brothers and sisters of the movement for social justice have faced immeasurable tragedies and setbacks. Despite these challenges, we persist. While the road may be long, we are fortunate to have inherited a roadmap from those who have paved the path. This is why NewSed takes the opportunity every year to honor those who continue to fight for social justice. It is important to pause and absorb the lessons we have learned and understand how and why we must continue the fight. The murders of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and countless others have cast light upon the remaining abuses of institutional racism that are not only prevalent in police forces throughout the country, but are rife throughout society. The Black Lives Matter movement began in 2013. However, this year, the general state of unrest following national leadership's failure in responding to the onset of the COVID-19 crises and subsequent broadcasting of footage that captured the horrific murder of George Floyd by law enforcement has propelled the Black Lives Matter movement into the national spotlight. Black Lives Matter's messages remind us that people of color and other vulnerable communities have vast strides to make if we are to establish a more equitable and just society. While many claim discrimination to be a thing of the past, we know this could not be further from the truth. Coronavirus cases and death statistics revealed the virus's disproportionate impact on black and brown communities, exposing the historic and colossal disparity in the level of health care and governmental resources provided to communities of color. Further, increased difficulty in receiving governmental support and assistance, including the PPP loans and other COVID-19 related financial support have wreaked havoc on minority businesses and the livelihoods of people of color. The murder of George Floyd spurred a national and international resurgence of the Black Lives Matter movement, driving hundreds of thousands to the streets to demonstrate, to march, and to peacefully protest the real issue of police brutality that far too often results in death, injury, or the unjust imprisonment of people of color. Today, as we have seen in the past, the efforts to achieve true equality are opposed by counter-protesters, disruptors, political maneuvering, and, the, and including the criminal pardoning of those who do harm. This is the work of a protective and broken system that we must oppose. This fight is clearly not over, and there is so much work to be done. This year has demonstrated the sheer fragility of our democracy as we approach an election that carries potential to enact both great change and tragedy. We face active voter suppression efforts and an authoritarian leader hell-bent on maintaining his power. Despite these challenges, we persist. In response to threats to our democracy, grassroots efforts have emerged throughout the country and the, and the ACLU, League of Women Voters, and many others are engaged in litigation and advocacy to put an end to voter suppression. If you are watching tonight, please, please look up your nearest ballot box and drop off your ballot in person. This year, the United States Supreme Court delivered a huge win for social justice movement, blocking President Trump's administration's plans to dismantle the DREAMers program, which has prevented the, the deportation of over 700,000 DREAMers. Given the difficulty of the roads ahead, it is not enough to simply pray for a better future. If we want to see change or equality in our lifetimes, we must come together and use our collective consciousness and activism to drive our hopes and dreams to fruition. I would like to conclude by remembering and recognizing the civil rights icons who have died in recent months. United States Representative Elijah E. Cummings, United States Supreme Court Justice John Paul Stevens, Nobel Literature Prize and Presidential Medal of Freedom awardee, author Tony Morrison, South African anti-apartheid campaigner, Andrew Malengi, United States House of Representatives and civil rights movement pioneer, John Lewis, 
author and co-founder of the ACT UP movement, Larry Kramer, civil rights movement photographer, Dan Budnick, Presidential Medal of Freedom awardee and civil rights activist, Reverend Joseph Lowry, famous NASA mathematician, Katherine Johnson, actor, Chadwick Boseman, author, Rudolfo Anaya, famed Denver activist, Geraldine Gonzalez, musician, Freddie Rodriguez Sr., president and CEO of Jackson Construction, Bob Jackson, and United States Supreme Court Justice, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Again, thank you for spending your important time with us. I'm honored to introduce Chief of Staff for Councilwoman Candy C. DeBaca and former NewsEd Civil Rights Award recipient, Lisa Calderon. Hello, I'm Lisa Calderon, former Civil Rights Award recipient and Chief of Staff for City Councilwoman Candy Sedabaca, the first young LGBTQ woman of color elected to Denver City Council. Thank you for joining us during what has been a very difficult year. 2020 has been a year unlike any other, testing our resolve in unprecedented ways. We have been impacted by the triple pandemic of racism, a recession, and COVID-19. Persistent disparities in health, wealth, and wages can feel like there's no end in sight. Yet this year has been a testament for how important it is to have hope and to care for one another. Our families and social relationships have always been essential to our survival. If anything, the roots of our resistance movements stems from the love that we have for our community. Communities of color know this. Our communities and cultures are resilient and remain strong. Despite efforts to suppress our votes, silence our voices and stifle our protests. Government repression of our civil liberties and civil rights is not new. Generations before us struggled with seemingly unsurmountable obstacles, and yet they never gave up fighting for our most fundamental rights, including freedom of speech, due process of law, and the right to marry whomever we choose, regardless of race, gender, or sexual orientation. Our ancestors and civil rights leaders left us a roadmap for social justice transformation. When they were tired, discouraged, or punished, they still persisted so that we could not face the same indignities and injustices that they endured. It is now our responsibility to keep the struggle going. We have witnessed some of the greatest strides that our ancestors only dreamed of, such as electing our first black president and confirming our first Latina Supreme Court justice. Many of us have also participated with some of the most impactful social justice movements of our time, including Occupy Wall Street, Standing Rock, Black Lives Matter, Me Too, and marijuana decriminalization. Yet even with these strides that have moved us toward a more inclusive and fair democracy, we are far from dismantling some of the most pernicious vestiges of racial, gender, and economic inequality. The legacy of redlining still smolders in many of our neighborhoods where exclusionary tools are used to keep out those who are homeless, formerly incarcerated, or who do not conform to the ideal family structure. As Denver becomes increasingly unaffordable and was recently rated the second most gentrifying city in the nation, America's wealth gap is the widest it's ever been, where the number of billionaires is growing, while more Americans lose their jobs and health care, and where the top 1% has as much wealth as the bottom 50%, a gap that will only widen as COVID-19 transforms our economy and exacerbates race, class, gender, and age disparities. 
but it doesn't have to be this way. Those in power must be kept in check. The time has come to take back our ability to keep our elected leaders accountable to the people. Whether it be in city hall, the courts, or in the streets, we must keep elevating our voices so that we are impossible to ignore. While change may not always feel possible, we must remember that the gains of today were built on a foundation laid by those who sacrificed for us. Those who fought to defend stolen indigenous land, those who fought for the right to vote, and those who are still fighting for the right of women to control our own bodies. The most effective social justice movements occurred when the people decided enough was enough. We, the people, are most powerful when we organize together, harness our collective power, and resist injustice. And we must vote. Even if you are uninspired by our political candidates, vote for your rights instead. Vote for the future direction of the Supreme Court to protect our hard-won freedoms. Vote for climate action and the sustainability of Mother Earth. Vote for workers' rights and better wages. Vote for compassionate solutions for our unhoused neighbors and those at risk of losing their homes and small businesses. Vote for the transformation of our legal system and to save Black, Brown, and Indigenous lives. Vote like your life depends on it, because it does. So let's take action together to make our ancestors and each other proud. Remember, this is what our community is about. Standing up for the unseen, speaking for the voiceless, and resisting those who would send us backward by stripping away our rights. It is up to us to stand for truth, liberty, and justice so that we can say to future generations, our commitment to social justice was unwavering. Our faith in our democracy was restored. Our love and dedication for our community helped to heal the divisions of our time. We are building a path forward for you, the next generation of freedom fighters, so that you can look back to us someday as your ancestors with pride. Hello, my name is Andrea Barella. I'm the president and CEO of New Said Community Development Corporation. Thank you so much for tuning in and joining us. We hope you watch till the end because we have one final musical performance from Laurie Edwards. This year marks our 29th annual Civil Rights Awards. And while the ceremony is very different from previous years, we hope you found it inspiring. NewSet is a nonprofit charitable organization. Our mission is to promote the economic success of underserved populations in the seven county Denver metro area through community development with a focus on affordable housing, small businesses, and asset creation. If you have not heard of NewSed, please visit us at newsed.org to learn more about our 47-year history and current programs. Every year, the Civil Rights Awards is an opportunity to update you on our community impact and ask you to support NewSed with a financial contribution. If you contribute from now till the end of November 2020, you will receive special offers to some of Denver's best Latin restaurants. As always, we are grateful for your support, and here is how we put your dollars to work. From 2019 to present day, NewSet has served over 1,800 individuals in our housing counseling department. These people received first-time home buyer one-on-one -on -one counseling, participated in CHAPA certified group education, were assisted with foreclosure mitigation, and received post-purchase counseling. Within this same time frame, NewSet housing counselors distributed over $49,000 in down payment assistance to qualifying households. In addition, 26 people participated in NewSed's Lending Circle program, accessing individual, unrestricted, zero interest secured social loans. NewSed's Lending Circle program is the only individual loan program of its kind in Colorado. 
All of Newshead's housing counseling services are HUD certified and free to use. More than 60% of our clients are below the area median income level. To access these services, visit our website or call Newshead for an appointment at 303-534-8342. We cannot be prouder of the significant progress over the last year and a half in our small business development programming. Last year, we introduced an eight-week business basic course to our menu of services. This course reviews every small business related topic pertinent to starting or growing your business with exclusive materials and resource guides. We are currently holding our third cohort class online and in 2021, we are planning quarterly courses in English and Spanish. Our retail incubator program, The Zone Marketplace, continues to grow in clients and provides one-on-one -on -one coaching and access to partner organizations. By the end of the year, we will exceed our service goals by supporting up to 50 small businesses. If you would like to volunteer for this program, we are in need of business coaches. Feel free to contact me directly. Finally, we want to introduce NewSED's newest program, New Seed Lending. This is a program dedicated to small business lending, credit building assistance, and specialized technical assistance in financial coaching. This program launched in October of this year and we are looking to support small businesses with micro loans and access to our banking partner, Alpine Bank, for continued lending assistance. This program is being supported by the City of Denver's Office of Financial Empowerment, Wells Fargo, and Alpine Bank. With the onset of COVID-19 and the loss of Newshead's major event, the Denver Cinco de Mayo Festival, this has been a particularly rough year, as it has been for many nonprofits and businesses. While our budgets have suffered, we have not ceased in the level and quality of programming we continue to provide to low and moderate income families throughout the Denver metro area. In fact, we have ramped up programming in light of current events and the hardships many are facing. We are also preparing for 2021 and whatever lies ahead for the community. We would like to thank our sponsors, Su Teatro, our speakers, New Set staff, Veronica Barella, and our musical guest, who we could not have done this video without. Also, thank you for your time, and we hope you were able to support NewsEd with a contribution that is significant to you. If you are watching this on YouTube, there is a link to NewsEd's giving portal in the description below, or you can go to our website at newsed.org. Now I would like to introduce Laurie Edwards, who will wrap us up. Thank you. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me let there be peace on earth the peace that was meant to be with God Begin.